Welcome back to Troop Talk, your Low Country military connection right here on Live 5 Plus. I'm your host, Captain Wayne Caps. Well, returning home from a deployment is always a challenge, but when you return with an injury, that transition can be even more challenging. Let's see how this innovative, cost-saving program is bringing, bringing wounded warriors and man's best friend together. I'm Senior Airman Bobby Pilch, and that was my new friend Titus. <laughs> Titus is a two-and-a-half-year-old Labrador Retriever who was recently rescued from Horry County Animal Shelter. He's receiving special training at the Naval Consolidated Brig, but this isn't your normal obedience training. Titus and other dogs like him are trained by prisoners at the Naval Consolidated Brig here in Charleston to assist wounded warriors to better cope with their injuries. If the veteran can't perform a basic activity of daily living, chances are the dog can do it or assist them. I've been in that for a little bit. Yes, good boy, Kai. Good here in Charleston, five dogs have graduated training at the Brig as part of the Canines for Veterans program. During training, each dog is paired with a prisoner who has been taught how to train the dogs over 70 commands. The dogs learn faster because they are always at their trainer's side. The prisoners, uh, between learning a, a trade, having something useful, learning unconditional love, uh, they, they get to insert themselves, give back to what they may feel they, they have let down uh, society, given back to the military. The Canines for Veterans program, sponsored by the nonprofit group Carolina Canines, has been here in Charleston for just over a year now. Typically, it takes one to three years to train each dog. The ultimate goal is to empower wounded warriors so they may achieve greater independence and enhanced quality of life. Our service dogs are trained to do a variety of programs. We have four different categories. We have a walker dog, which acts as a mobile cane. We have a pair dog which pulls a manual wheelchair and can do the skills that are associated with that. And we have a quad dog for somebody who's in a power chair that can do that. And we're also coupling that with one of the few organizations that actually provide the ADA compliant dogs that can actually assist people with post-traumatic stress disorder. And that's an important category, especially with the, the war in Iraq and Afghanistan at this point. It's really good for patients to have PTSD. Uh, just the stimulation from rubbing on and everything like that lowers the anxiety levels and stuff. And a lot of people who, who have PTSD have trouble being detached from their loved ones. And you know, maybe sitting around petting their dog like that will stir up some of those feelings and help them reattach to their families. Harrison estimates that once a dog completes the program, each service canine is worth more than $40,000. But to the wounded warriors who receive the dogs, they are priceless. The military and Department of Defense don't provide anything or the federal government. All they provide is the prisoners, the housing for the uh, prisoners, and we have to provide everything else. All the vet care, leashes, bowls, collars, food, that type of thing. Through the service and companionship of a specially trained dog, the folks here at the Brig working with Canines for Veterans are improving the lives of men and women who sacrifice much serving in the military. From the Naval Consolidated Brig, I'm Senior Airman Bobby Pilch, and this is Titus reporting for Troop Talk. Back to you, Captain Caps. Wow, what a great story. Thanks for that, Bobby. Uh, and joining us now is Rick Harrison from Carolina K-9. Rick, thanks for joining us here on Troop Talk. Thank you very much for having me. It's a pleasure to be here. Well, I want to talk a little bit about what you touched on in the story uh, about the cost savings of this program. It's a huge cost saving to the taxpayer, and it provides a, just an unbelievable uh, service. Can you talk a little bit about the cost savings that this program actually uh, provides? Sure. The cost savings to the American public is, and to the American taxpayer, is phenomenal. They don't pay a dime for anything that we actually do. Our dogs are valued at close to $40,000 by the time they're completely trained and we provide them free of charge to our military veterans. Um, the only thing the U.S. government provides is the prisoners to train the dogs and the housing to provide for the prisoners, which is already included in that. So we come in, we have to provide everything, leashes, bowls, collars, vet bills, um, dogs, training, all of that for the, the prisoners and for the wounded warriors. So it really is a program that doesn't cost the American taxpayers anything out of pocket. Now, how did this idea come about? Uh, uh, you're using prisoners at the brig. I mean, you're putting uh, people who are in, in central in jail, you're putting them to work, uh, providing, a, you know, giving back, providing a good service. Exactly. Um, the idea came across in 2007. Um, we had placed our first service dog with a veteran and we had been asked to place more service dogs that still had the same quality more quickly. And we needed to have people who were going to be able to be dedicated in order to train the service dogs. 
So the idea came up with using uh, prisoner population, and we added a little twist on it that why not allow the military prisoners to train the service dogs for the wounded warriors, the same population that put them in prison for various reasons to be able to work through some of it, give them the opportunity to give back to the community, and then in the final aspect, let the prisoners actually train the wounded warrior on how to get the most out of the dog that they've trained for them. I think this is just an, a phenomenal program. And uh, let's talk about some of the success stories you have. I know you, you're you bound to have several success stories. And uh, just tell us a little bit about some of the things that uh, the wounded service members have gotten out of uh, these service dogs. Well, the service members are one of the, we call it a triple win because everybody wins in the process. The dogs win because they come from shelters and 90% of the time they would have been euthanized had we not received a dog. The prisoners win because they have the opportunity to not only give back, but they have the opportunity to develop new skills that can be utilized when they get out. And then the wounded warrior finally wins because they have the opportunity to have a dog that is fully trained to help them recover from their injuries, whether it be amputations, whether it be traumatic brain injury, whether it be PTSD, uh, whatever the injuries, we can normally train a dog to provide skills in order to make that available for them to have as complete a life as possible. Well, Rick, let's talk just a little bit uh, before before we close. I want to talk a little bit about some of the self-satisfaction you get uh, working with this program. I mean, it's got to be, wow, what a, what a great job. It's a great job to have. Um, very few people actually have the ability to say that they would do the same job they have if they weren't being paid. Sure. Um, and that's one of the opportunities that, that I have. I am paid, um, not as much as anybody wants to, however. <laughs> uh, but at the same time, we have the ability to come in and really work with uh, a population to take them from the very beginning to completion and have a story where everybody wins. Well, Rick, thank you so much for joining us here on the set of Troop Talk. Uh, it's just an absolutely amazing story, and uh, we thank you for all the work that you do for uh, servicemen and women here in uniform. Thank you very much for having me. It's our pleasure. Well, that just about does it for this edition of Troop Talk, but we would love to hear from you. So you can check us out on the web at www.315aw.afrc.af.mil, or you can always find us on Facebook and Twitter at 315 Airlift Wing. Join us next time as we continue to bring you stories from the men and women of Charleston who defend your freedom at home and deployed around the world. Until then, I'm Captain Wayne Caps from the 315th Airlift Wing, and we'll see you next time on Troop Talk. Troop Talk is part of the Community Outreach Program of the 315th Airlift Wing at the Charleston Air Force Base and Live 5 WCSC. Join us next time as we feature the men and women of the armed services right here in the Lowcountry and deployed around the world.